Okay, so first I'm going to talk about what happened today, September 3rd, and then I'm going to do a quick uh, review of two stocks that two people on uh, my uh, channel had asked me to talk about, and I took a look at them, and I did a little bit of research, and I'll talk about those later. So first of all, this uh, morning the Dow started out at around 29,200. So if you look at the one day here, you can see, as you probably already heard on the news, the Dow fell like over a thousand points today at one point. The last time I checked, it was like a thousand fifty-seven. And um, basically, uh, the stories that CNBC put out, it's like US stock futures slip, as Wall Street braces for more tech losses. It's funny because I didn't actually hear them really talk about it, but a million people filed unemployment. Now, what's amazing to me is the complicity of the media with the Trump agenda. And it's like, I don't know who to trust. Most of these media channels, basically, they're not talking about the unemployment situation. They're not talking about the pending situation with rental evictions they're not talking about the pending situation with mortgage foreclosures if you remember back in 2008 the economy basically collapsed or at least the dow fell over 777 points on september 15 2008 like i'll never forget that because that date is like burned into my mind now the thing about it is as far as i'm concerned obama was running against the Bush presidency. He wasn't running against McCain Palin. Palin was a freaking joke. And poor McCain was just an old man, you know. And uh, they didn't make fun of his age because the right wing tried to stop not talking about that. They didn't They wanted, didn't want anybody talking about how old McCain was. And they even tried to quiet Trump down when he started his birther bullshit about uh, John McCain being born uh, possibly outside the United States, making him invalid to run as president. It's like we've been dealing with this stupid bastard for a long time. And now we're seeing that his economy is all smoke and mirrors. But I've been saying that for like the last two years i think so anyway dow fell over a thousand points at one point today that's the dow jones right there twenty eight thousand points 292 so anyway people who bought into tesla were really surprised to see what happened to tesla but see now anybody who got into tesla as they watched this week it fall from 504 to 426 now you understand the roller coaster that I was on for a long time. It was an emotional roller coaster. I bought into Tesla around $30 a share and I sold out around $1,005. If I had stayed in, I would have continued to stay in. The problem with me is, you know, if, if I hold, I'll hold as long as I can. But at a certain point, I say, you know what? I've had enough and I just want out. Now, if you bought into Tesla, understand something. Chances are you haven't really lost money, especially if you got in as soon as they announced the split. But the issue is now you're just going to have to wait a couple, maybe even a month or two. It might not even take that long. There will be a rebound in Tesla simply because the Model Y and the Model 3 deliveries are going to be ramped up. Tesla's moving to Texas. Tesla is going to be producing more cars, cheaper, faster. They already knocked $3,000 off of the Model 3. Chances are the Model Y will see a slight price cut after they get their production numbers up. But the thing about it is these cars are burning up the streets. These two, because they cost between fifty dollars and $60,000. See, that's how I do my stock research. It's not enough to just look at a company. It's enough, you have to understand what is it that this company makes and do people want it. That Model Y and that Model 3, I've been saying it for years those cars i knew those cars were going to push tesla to a thousand now you've seen them surpass a thousand they went to two thousand now anybody who got in however many stocks you bought they've been split you've got four per one and the thing about it is now you're gonna have to be on that same roller coaster that i was on and now you understand the reason why after waiting Eight years I sat on that roller coaster. After I sat on that roller coaster from 2012 till now, eight years I was on that roller coaster. Now you're on it. Now you understand how my emotions swing. So, anyway, Apple. 
Apple. Oh my good, my my siblings were like, "Oh, what the fuck? It's dropping like a stone." I was like, "Listen, listen, listen. This is to be expected. Let's understand what happened. People pumped up these shares as high as they would go, and then after that split, a lot of people sold off. Now, the problem is the real money, the rich people who buy hundreds of thousands of shares because they've got multiple millions of dollars, those people didn't sell. Those people stuck right in there and they're still in there and they've been in there for a long time because they know Apple is safe money. Apple's got all types of products coming out. They got the iPhone 12. They got the Apple Watch 6. They got all this other stuff. Well, they think that they got glasses coming out, for God's sakes. They've got these services like Apple Pay, and then they've got Apple Card, and people are going to be out with the Apple Card. I got my Apple Card already. My Apple Card has a $10,000 limit. I can walk into Apple and say, yo, give me that Apple Watch, and give me that Apple iPhone 12, and I can buy the biggest, most powerful ones they got, and I can walk out of there with deferred payment on my Apple card and get like 3% cash back, which doesn't really matter because Apple's probably already marked all that shit up, probably about uh, 15 or 20 or 30% or something. If you ask some people, they say the cost of making these phones is it like three or four hundred bucks, but they're selling them for a thousand five. That's the reason why Apple is so profitable. That's the reason why they have over two point two trillion dollars and nobody can touch them. That's the reason. So you just got to understand that's just what it is. OK, Amazon didn't really move that much uh, in the day. What was it? Uh, the day is high was around 3470 they didn't really move that much i mean amazon's as long as it's over 3300 as far as i'm concerned it didn't move that much but uh anyway microsoft microsoft took a big hit today microsoft was what was that 228 and down but see the thing about it is microsoft is microsoft you ain't got to worry about them that's microsoft microsoft right now is worth a trillion dollars microsoft is going to keep going up even if it's slow Microsoft is Microsoft. Everybody who's probably listening to this is either using a, a Microsoft computer or they listening on a tablet or something, and they might have one of them Surface books because they were trying to be different. Oh, I don't want to buy Apple. Let me take my chances on this Android garbage or this Microsoft tablet where they haven't figured out how to keep this thing from falling out of the dock. Oh, oh, great. Now they have a safety latch and I can push a button and it turns off the latch. Oh, great. Uh oh, I cracked my screen. Blah, blah, blah. So anyway, most of the stocks that were tech took big hits today. Even automotive took a hit. Like, you know, my Ford Motor Company stock, you know, my Ford Motor, I, I have a thousand shares in Ford. That's down. But it, I mean, it's insignificant because I, I got I got in like when it was like below five dollars. So it, it's insignificant to me because I haven't started losing money. So I don't really care. Workhorse, GM, everybody's in the red. This is blood right here. Everything's bleeding. Uh, I kept telling people, yeah, you want to get into candy, you want to get into NIO, those are those electric car manufacturers. thing about it is you got to get in while they're as low as possible. And now you're watching them bleed. And when the blood stops and they get their cars out there and they start showing out these cars and they start selling these cars. Because, by the way, NIO, they're already selling cars in China right now and they're making their deliveries. China has a market bigger than America when it comes to electric cars. So the thing about it is either you're in it or you're not. Otherwise, eight years or something from now, you're going to hear me bragging about how I got into NIO and I got in nice and early. And then you're going to hear me say, oh, well, I tried to get other people into it, but nobody listened to me. So when I kept telling them, I was like, yeah, come on, get the candy. Candy is like six dollars and 66 cents. You know what? If either you're in or not, that's all it is. That's all it is. And then there's Alibaba. Alibaba was down a little bit, but then again, everything was down. Facebook was down. Facebook hit a high of 306, and it's been down. Everything's down. And Facebook is having problems because of Apple uh, messing with them and their privacy policies and whatever. Personally, I like watching Apple go to war with Facebook because I hate Facebook and I hate Zuckerberg. I only own the stock because I wanted to short it. So anyway, um... I could save this for later or come back to it. You know, I'll come back to it. I'll talk about cryptocurrency in a second because nothing's happening there. I, I made a couple of posts on the YouTube community about it. Nothing's happening there. As you know, airlines are still on their roller coaster. Uh, Delta Airlines is still trying to move back up. JetBlue is still close to the $10 low. Um, American Airlines still isn't where it should be. All the airlines are sitting still. They're talking about laying off pilots. 
Trust me, these things are going to be in the red soon. But again, people say, oh, yeah, you should have never told us to buy the airlines. Listen, I told you to buy the airlines when this first started. When the coronavirus first started, it knocked all of these stocks down to the lowest point that I think they could go before there's a bankruptcy. So the bottom line is, if you get in at the lows, then right now you're up. Because if you notice right now, the airlines are actually green. But that's because the low was so low. When it went low for the 52-week low back March 18th, these things were knocked down so far until as long as you got in like during that week, you are probably up right now. So um, anyway, keep it moving. Uh, as far as my oil stocks, I'll have to look at that separately. But for the most part, the economy has started, um, how should I say, moving again. People are going back to work apparently next week after Labor Day. Trump has decided to risk our lives, risk our children's lives and whatnot and force us all back in there so we can save his economy or I should say save what looks to be a bloodbath of his economy. If any of your children die, shame on you. you now, I want you to remember something. In ancient Egypt, God had plagues because he didn't like Pharaoh and he told Pharaoh, let his people go, right? So sure enough, what's happening right now? You got Antifa and Black Lives Matter fighting because they hate the cops, because the cops keep getting caught on videotape, putting their knees in people's neck. And then God's trying to tell Trump, let my people go. And what is Trump doing? Trump's like, no, I'm not changing nothing. In fact, Rittenhouse was acting in self-defense. No, he wasn't, he's a murderer. He's a murdering animal and he's gonna serve time. I guarantee you that by the time this is over, he's gonna end up doing between five and ten years because the thing about it is his, his fat mama brought him across state lines with a illegal weapon that he shouldn't have had and he ended up killing two people and wounding a third no matter what happens he's getting time and then on top of that he's getting civil court raped in civil court in fact that might also apply to what's happening to him in jail because i haven't heard nothing about bail and i haven't heard nothing about what jail cell he's in because they don't want nobody to know what's happening poor kyle is in the booty house right now kyle kyle rittenhouse is in the booty house so anyway next amd i told people buy amd when it was fifty dollars Tech took a loss today. AMD got up to $92, I think it was. What was it, 92? Because AMD was like $90 a share like a day or two ago. But see, AMD has other problems. Their biggest problem is NVIDIA. NVIDIA's got these damn new uh, 3000 series GTX, GeForce, RTX, ray tracing cards. Let me tell you something. I got the 2080 Ti sitting in my computer right now, and I want to get that 3090 Kingpin. Why? Some people say, oh, well, you don't need that. You just need a 37 or you need a 3080. Hells no. I go straight to the top, baby. Straight to the top. I don't have a big-ass credit score, 850 for nothing. I'm taking that Apple card. We're going to walk in. We're going to walk out with that 3090 Kingpin. We're getting the Kingpin edition. $2,000. $1,999. Read them and weep. I'm just waiting. I'm going to go in there, walk in there, and just roll right out with it. Why? Because I can. So anyway. NVIDIA, $520. NVIDIA was kicking ass, and they were taking names. What, what were they up to? They were up to 500 Oh, my God. Man, these guys were flying. So NVIDIA's got... They got this market locked down. AMD can't say nothing. They got, they got this thing called Big Navi coming out. NVIDIA don't give a goddamn about no Big Navi. NVIDIA's got a 3070 that outperforms everything else. I mean, when I say everything else... I mean, they got a 3070 outperforms a 2080 Ti. If you don't know what I'm talking about, it's okay. But they got the 3070, then they got the 3080 that outperforms everything, everything else. And then they got the 3090 that basically says, hey, AMD, game over. And that's it. And that's what I like. I like it when you bring out a product that's so ridiculous that nobody can say anything to you because it's like game over. There's nothing they can say. AMD, you know, you, you guys are down, but you know what? You're, you're not out. You're down. But you're not out, you know? You're not out. So anyway, next. Um, plug and BLNK. These are charging systems for these electric cars. So the thing about it is um, if you choose to invest in these, uh, plug, they, they run charging systems for these electric cars. My thing is wait until they bottom out as much as you think they can bleed and then buy them. BLNK is less than... Uh, what is it? Less than $10 a share. I already bought 100 shares of that. 
Because anytime something's less than ten dollars share, ten dollars per share, I usually buy a hundred shares. Um, it depends what kind of company it is, but typically that's what I usually do. That's how I start. Uh, Zoom. Everybody was going crazy over Zoom. Look at this. Look at this. Zoom was up to four hundred and sixty-seven dollars. Four hundred sixty-two. Zoom was flying. I made a couple posts on the community about that. Look at Zoom right now. Look at Zoom. Oh my God! You just dropped all the way down to three hundred and eighty-one dollars. But you know what? Listen, technology is going to be back. School's about to start. Kids are going shopping for computers. Kids got to go. I went to Best Buy. They were sold out. You know what they were sold out of? They were sold out of webcams and they were sold out of microphones. Now, I already got a webcam, but I was planning to buy one of those Snowball Ice webcams because I have a sibling that gave me a birthday present. They gave me a Best Buy card, so I had to use it. Uh, the Snowball Ice was about, what, $50? So I ended up paying, like, what was it, like 55 or something like that? Um, but anyway, they were sold out of microphones. They were sold out of webcams. What does that tell you? Kids are going to be doing distance learning. A lot of schools are not letting the kids back into school. So think about that when you do your investing. Think about the fact that you're going to have these kids sitting at school rather than going back and forth to school. They're going to be ordering garbage on Amazon. They're going to be uh, ordering stuff, FedEx, uh, UPS, USPS. If you can buy those stocks... You've probably noticed USPS, FedEx, those stocks have all gone up just the same as Amazon. They just haven't gone as high. People are sitting at home watching Home Shopping Network buying stuff. Every time I go to my mom's house, she's sitting back there and there's some woman on television like Martha Stewart trying to sell you a, a iron. And, and I'm like, why are you watching this stuff? Stop spending all that damn money. Me personally, I've been saving my money because of this pandemic. I've been waiting till the pandemic ends. This way I can go into the car dealership and I can buy a new car and they'll be desperate to sell it to me because nobody will have any money. Nobody will be buying anything. In fact, most people, they'll have to choose between, you know, paying their rent and eating because Trump's economy is doing so goddamn great, isn't it? Uh, how are you feeling? You feeling great again? MAGA? MAGA? Huh? MAGA what? What? MAGA, you feeling good again? I feel bloodbath. That's what I feel. So that's how it's been going. That's my uh, really, really quick stock look. Uh, let's take a quick look at these two stocks that somebody asked me about. And by the way, I will mention this. Banks. Banks seem to be down a little bit. My investor's bank, that's the bank that you see me go into when I'm uh, fulfilling my uh, portfolio. Investor's bank seems to be up a little. Uh, Wells Fargo, Bank of America. Now, you know ba Warren Buffett's buying up Bank of America. He's doing it quietly. And I was buying Bank of America before Buffett made it cool because I had that foresight. See, he's getting old. He's still sharp, but he's getting old. Beware of an old man in a game where young guys die young. But you also have to beware of an old man when the young guy's around because I'm coming to take his top spot. I'm coming to take it. He's not even going to see me coming. In fact, by the time I get to his spot, like he's gonna be like he's gonna be dead because he's old. Like that guy's like ninety years old or something like that. So anyway, uh, what else? Anything I missed? Logitech. We're doing okay. I'm I'm happy because I, I told you I told you to buy Logitech and AMD when they were fifty dollars. Logitech is down, but you're still if you bought Logitech when I told you, you're still up twenty dollars if you bought it when I told you. So we're good. Okay, so uh, let's take a look at these two right, stocks. Basically, in order to understand my investment, um, how should I say, philosophy or research. Now, everybody has a different philosophy. Uh, some people just blindly invest in things. Some people invest based on insider trading. Some people invest on things that they just happen to like. Uh, somebody asked me about OXY. That's Occidental Petroleum Corporation. Now, first of all, I'll, I'll take you through it the way I would go through it. Okay, so first of all, let's take a look. They have a dividend yield of 0.32. So that means that just by owning their shares, you're getting 0.32% off of each share. Now, that's already better than what you're going to get if you're putting your money just in a savings account. So first of all, that's my first check. So that's a thumbs up right there. Thumbs up. So next thing. Okay. If I had owned this stock for the last five years, how... Has it improved my money? So let's take a look. Five years. Goddamn. Look at that. Look at that. You remember how I told you about that other company, um, Gulfport? 
Somebody had told me about that company, and when they told me about it, I think it was 0 0.60 cents per share, right? And then I looked at their long term, and I was like, wait a minute. This place has been losing money. In fact, let me show it to you real quick. Uh, Gulfport Energy, right? Um, I think it's GPOR. GPOR, yeah. Gulfport Energy. So they told me about it. It was about 60 cents. Yeah, it's about 62 now. Now, if you look at it within the last six months, it spiked. It went from, what is it, in March, it went all the way up, and it started looking really good. It went to 274. But in my videos, I kept saying, you know what, I don't feel comfortable with this because if you look at it, it's five years. That's a goddamn really bad five years. So that means that if you had gotten in five years ago, you've done nothing but watch your money decline. That to me tells me that I don't want to trust this because see, I tend to hold my stocks for a long time. Now, back to Oxy. If you've been in Oxy for five years and you got in five years ago, you've watched your money rise a little bit. So let's see per share, let's see, you started at 69, you went up to about 86, and now the fuck you're down here, you're down at 1259. So you tell me, does that look like a safe investment? No. Now, this is five years because, and the reason why I wanna look at the five years is because you can't trust the last one year because of coronavirus. Coronavirus took them down what was it? March 18th was when the Dow crashed, basically. So they were at $10.53 then. As far as I can tell, there's no way that they're coming back to be what they used to be. Now, maybe they could surprise me, but I don't think so. So, first of all, what about this company do you know? Occidental Petroleum Corporation, American company engaged in hydrocarbon exploration in the U.S., the Middle East, Colombia, so forth and so on, Chile, Canada, United States, right? Um, take a closer look at new warrants. There's always news when you go into these apps. There's always news about these things. So it says the director just bought 6.3% more shares. Yeah, just because he bought shares, that doesn't mean you should. Everybody else watched themselves lose money. Could they come back? Maybe they could, but I don't think so. As When it comes to oil stock, let me tell you this, and I don't give a shit who's listening um, because you could say whatever you want. I'll probably just delete your comment and ban you. But understand something. America, if we were not engaged in economic warfare against Venezuela, Venezuela has the most oil on the planet. If we were not purposefully engaged in economic warfare, in fact, let me show that to you. What is that? Venezuela oil reserves? It's, it's racist policy. And they do that so that they can control the stock market. Oh, in fact, not the Venezuela oil, oil reserves. Okay, so understand what we're doing. What we're doing is we're buying our oil from the Saudis, right? Now, the reason why we're doing that and the reason why we have this economic warfare going against Venezuela is because if we can control Venezuela's oil and make it so that they can't sell it by putting sanctions on them and this, that, and the other, we'll continue to buy our oil from Saudi Arabia while Venezuela goes hungry because they can't afford to sell their oil. First of all, I just want you to think about that. Now they say, oh yeah, well the reason why Venezuela is poor is because it's socialism, right? Understand something. There's no way in hell that you could control the most important energy resource in the history of man and be poor. No way. It would imagine if Venezuela had streets paved with gold bricks. Would it make sense for Venezuela to be poor? We're purposefully keeping them locked down, buying oil from Saudi Arabia to maintain control in the Gulf. And then what we're doing is we're basically saying that these people are poor because it's socialism. Now, I want you to think back when Bush was in office, Hugo Chavez was in office. Hugo Chavez came here and said, I can't stand next to Bush. Bush is the devil. It smells like sulfur. If you remember, he actually said that. Americans were suffering under the Bush administration to the point where Hugo Chavez, and I'll show you because you can look it up. I can't make this shit up. Chavez offered Americans oil. Americans oil. Because we... Our oil was so goddamn high that nobody 
a lot of people, I should say, couldn't afford it. Hugo Chavez. Now, this is the evil Venezuela, evil leader. This guy offered to bring poor people in America oil. That's like your worst evil dictator that America's media, quote unquote, America's media. They tell you that these people are evil. And this evil dictator says, oh, you guys can't afford oil? Well, guess what? We'll bring you some oil if you need it, and we'll give it to you cheap. Venezuela's got all the goddamn oil on the freaking planet, and they offered America oil because the Bush administration had us suffering to the point where we couldn't afford oil. I just want you to think about that. Now, you tell me why Venezuela is so poor. You tell me. And I don't, if you use the word socialism, I know you're lying. Because these people are basically sitting on a gold mine. And the only reason why they're like that is because we haven't figured out a way to steal it from them yet. You hear what I'm saying to you? Okay. So anyway, let's go over to SQ. Somebody asked me about Square. Square. Square, they, as you know, Square are those basically those uh, credit card scanners and whatnot. You usually see those uh, point of sale transactions. Now, let's think about Square. First of all, point of sale. This company makes computers and cell phone connectors that allow you to have a point of sale just about anywhere, right? What's been happening? Coronavirus has made it so people are afraid to touch money. And then on top of that, the U.S. Mint was shut down for so long that we're having a coin shortage. So you go to a large amount, there's, you know, there's not enough coins. So would it make sense to buy into a company that makes point of sale transaction devices? Well, before I say my spiel, let's look at how Square is doing right now over a year to date. Well, if you own Square at $63, during January 2nd. Right now, you're up to $152. Hmm, I don't know. Does that sound like a good investment? I bought in at $63, and right now I'm worth $152 per share. Let's look at Square's five years. Hmm, well, let's see. If I bought into Square five years ago, I would have had $12.85 per share. Now, I am worth, right now today, $152 per share. Does that sound like a good investment? I would say that it does. And it's really that simple. Now, by the way, does Square have a dividend? Um, as far as I can see, they're not doing a dividend on their stock. However, for holding this stock over time, because of coronavirus, it did nothing but go up. Look at, look at this, look at this. Uh, what is this, the six months? Coronavirus struck, what was that? The, the thing bottomed, the Dow bottomed out March 18th. Look at that. Coronavirus has made it so point of sale transactions are absolutely mandatory. Most people in some restaurants, they don't even take cash. That was March 18th. Look at that. Look at that. Oh, look at that. 152.86. Does that look like a good investment? You damn right it was. And it's really, really that simple. You, 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 to read this market, you have to understand what are the essential services, what has been rising despite coronavirus, like, you know, Amazon, Apple, computer tech, so forth and so on. So for the people who got like hurt today because the market like plunged a thousand points. Oh, no, this is the most fabulous market ever. The market's fabulous. It's doing great. This is the greatest market ever in the history of me. For everybody who believes that bullshit, certain stocks have gone up and appreciated. The vast majority have not. Bottom line, the Dow's strength is in Apple, Amazon, Google, Tesla, Microsoft. Now, yeah, there's a couple of others, like, you know, Zoom and a couple others. But the bottom line is the top, like, six or seven companies are trillion-dollar companies. Apple's about to go to $3 trillion. I guarantee you, within two years, they're at $3 trillion. So anybody who got hurt today and they bought the Apple stock and they're down, don't worry about that. You're going to be right back up. Don't even worry about it. Apple's about to release $2,000 cell phones, for God's sakes. Don't even worry about it. So the last thing I'll talk about real quick 
is cryptocurrency, or at least the top three cryptocurrencies, because most of this stuff is garbage. So I don't follow this stuff anymore. I mean, you know, Bitcoin had its day. That day is over. Okay, so basically, I kept on making fun of Bitcoin because it couldn't hold its own above $10,000. Bitcoin rose up to because they were hyping it mind you there was a lot of frenzied buyers as the dow was going up they were hyping it within the last month it went to 12,390 what is this 12,331 and right now it's back at 10,277 so you just shed a whole hell of a lot of money right in fact this story right here bitcoin tanks to 10 Point four k Ethereum market dominance. So Ethereum, which is basically another junk coin Ponzi scheme. Look at Ethereum. Ethereum, if you went back a day, Ethereum was at four hundred dollars basically. Oh, you go back a week. Ethereum rose up to four eighty three, and boom, now it's here three eighty five. Now you tell me, does that sound like a safe investment? Now, the problem with cryptocurrency is you can't do my five-year trick. And the reason why is because cryptocurrency reached its all-time highs in January 2018. So if you look at its five-year and you go back to, two, that's its 2000, yeah. If you go back to January 2018, that's its high, 1,366. Bitcoin reached a high of 19,000. It didn't make it to 20. A lot of speculation said, yeah, Bitcoin's going a million. Bitcoin could go to 10 million. And I was like, yo, guys, there's not enough money in the world to do that. It's not going to happen. Oh, you're just stupid. You don't know what you're talking about. I pulled out. I took my money and I reinvested it elsewhere. And I made money off of Bitcoin and then I moved out of it. Once I understood that the government was going to get involved, the government is never going to allow cryptocurrency to challenge the U.S. dollar, the Chinese yuan, the Russian whatever. It's not going to happen, guys. For now, people who do use Bitcoin when they're overseas and they trade in it, understand your Bitcoin is still traded in U.S. dollars. Your Bitcoin does not stand on its own. Why do I know it doesn't stand on its own? Why? Because if I ask you how much is a Lamborghini Aventador, you'll always tell me it's about $500,000. Now, if I ask you how much it is in Bitcoin, you either won't know what to say or you won't know how much it is at that very moment. Everything is traded against the U.S. dollar. It is a reserve currency. It's that simple. So for people who keep putting money into Bitcoin and keep watching this shit fall, understand something. The people who bought into Bitcoin back here when it was like four and $500, because I, I specifically remember calling into the Karen Hunter show because it was a guy talking about Bitcoin. And I was arguing and fighting with the guy. And I told him why I felt it was a Ponzi scheme. I don't even remember. I might have recorded that conversation, but I don't remember because usually when I call in, I record it. But I remember when it was like $500. And the thing about it is I said, yeah, I bought some, but I believe it's a Ponzi scheme. And I don't think everybody should be doing this unless they know what they're doing. Sure enough, it started to rise, rise, rise. Made me look like a fool. But guess what? That million dollars, they never saw it and they never will. So now, boom, and now you're down here. Now, granted, if you bought in when it was $500, yeah, you are up. Yes, you are. The problem is most people who bought in here are trying to sell their Bitcoin every time it gets about here to about $10,000. So basically, you've got a lot of people sitting back with Bitcoin and they believe they know it's not going very high. They just know it. Some of them are hedging their bets and they're holding on to it. And this goes for Ethereum and Litecoin, too. People who put a lot of money into these things, they know that in order for them to sell out of their positions in Bitcoin and Ethereum, they are waiting for it to go as high as they can get it to go. It's a pump and dump. That's what they call it. Pump and dump. If you ever saw the movie Boiler Room, pump and dump is when you purposefully drive interest in a stock. As soon as it gets to a specific high, that's when you trigger a sell off. There's people who are desperately trying to get out of it. Let me tell you something else. There's people who are rich in Bitcoin because they got in nice and early and they've moved to Puerto Rico so they don't have to pay taxes. Because you know how you always hear about the rich not paying their fair share of taxes and the rich always return. Well, at least we give you jobs. We give you jobs here at Amazon so that you can sell other Americans cheap Chinese shit, uh, plastic brooms that break after you use them two or three times. Well, that's their response to everything. But the meanwhile, in the background, these people are hiding that money and they're running to Puerto Rico 
just like Peter Schiff, and they don't want to pay their fair share of taxes, and that's basically what's happening in this market. The rich are not paying their fair share. Oh, no, but we give you jobs. We made it so that you can buy these sneakers for $400 that we paid some Indonesian kid like 25 cents to make, and he ate that day, and then you wore your nice sneakers, right? We give you jobs. We give you sneakers. Guess what, guys? The rich are not paying their fair share of taxes. Okay, they're not paying. They're not. In fact, if I had a billion dollars and I could figure out a country to move to where I wouldn't have to pay my taxes, well, guess what? I'm packing all my shit moving. I'm sorry. It's self-interest. It's selfish. Yes, it is. But that's just how they do it. And they control the media. And they never let these messages get out. That's why I'm here standing here talking into an iPhone right now, telling you how you should be investing your money. So basically, I'm looking online to see just how much I should be able to get for my 2080 Ti EVGA black card. What I've noticed is that the highest bids are actually on the cards that are dubbed the Founders Editions. Uh, those were obviously the launch editions that came directly from NVIDIA. Um, I believe those were reference cards, and because they were reference cards, they were basically the lowest operating spec that you could expect out of that card. This is a kingpin, and it looks like somebody's selling this brand new, and they're starting to bid at $600. And now this is a 2080 Ti. Normally, this thing was $1,500. But ultimately, what's disrupting the prices for these things is the fact that the new 3000 series has been announced and the 3070, which is going to be the lowest card in the bundle, is about $500 or it'll probably be between $500 and $599 because there's usually some markup. But the thing about it is that thing is expected to be twice as fast as the 2080 Ti. So... This is the card actually that I have right here. Somebody is selling it for whatever reason at $18.99. This must be like Walmart or something because they don't seem to understand that this card wasn't worth more than $1,200. Either that or this is Canadian dollars or something. But um, yeah, when you look at these things and you take a look and you see how much people are selling them for in condition used or open box... Uh, in fact, I'll put open box or used. Or yeah, I'll just put used. Some of these people are trying to sell them, but I noticed they're not getting any bids on them. Because the thing about it is, this card is still... It, the problem is the downwards pressure. This card's really still worth about $1,000. But once that 2070 comes out, it's going to make this card absolutely obsolete. So I was taking a look just to see what kind of... Uh, prices I can expect to get if I sell mine and it looks like everybody's doing a massive quick dump what is this uh sort ending soonest yeah that's how you figure out who's selling what and how quickly is it ending so here you go $725 and it has 16 minutes left and nobody's interested and let me let me give you a word of advice if you're buying a 2080 Ti there's only two companies you want to buy that thing from you only want to buy it from NVIDIA Direct as a Founders Edition card, or you want to buy it from EVGA. The same goes if you buy a 3000 series. You only want the Founders Edition, or you want an EVGA model. All this other stuff, Aorus and all those other things, Gigabyte, it's like when it comes to resale value, you can forget it. Look at this right here, 1317 for a dual 2080 Ti by Asus. Nobody wants that shit. 1317. You're not getting that, buddy. You're not getting that. And I'm looking at this kingpin right here. This has 11 hours on it. Something tells me this isn't going to rise that high. Now, granted, this is the see what I like about this card is this card has the uh AIO built right into it. And when I buy my uh 3090, I want the model that has the AIO built into it. Now, I don't know if that's actually even necessary because they're claiming that the dual fan design of the 3090 is supposed to keep it very quiet and it's all supposed to keep it very cool. But the one thing I know is, you know, I'm not going to really be gaming in 4K. I'll probably be gaming in max like 1440p. But uh, for the most part, the new card is supposed to be able to do 8K gaming. That's going to be crazy. 
So, uh, God knows where these things are going. But you know what? If you just look at the buy it nows, in fact, let's see. These people with the buy it nows, they're selling them for, if you give them that specific amount of money, whatever it is, they're ready to go. But, um, yeah, that's the thing. So the 3070, the 3080, and the 3090 are going to destroy the 2080 Ti prices. Now, there are a lot of people who are still going to buy one simply because they can, you know, run multiple cards in a, uh, in a, in a single computer configuration. Like, if they already have one, they can just add another one and run it in SLI. thing about it is, with the power that they're talking about with these 3080s and the 3090s, Something tells me that's not even going to be that likely. I think most people are going to just go for the 3000 series if they have that kind of money.